Hello, my lovely friends. My name is Ava, and today I have romance recommendations where the hero has some tattoos. I love a tatted man. Okay, I do. I'm a, I'm a sucker. I am a sucker for tatted men. If you show me you got a whole sleeve of tattoos on your arm, I will be sucked in. Okay, it's like a toxic trait of mine, okay? I love a tattooed man. I love these fictional men that have tattoos on them. Mm, I love them. So let's get into these 10 recommendations. Here are 10 men that have tattoos on them. First one that I have is Hearts in Darkness by Laura Kay. This is the first book, but I also have the bind up. This was so kindly gifted to me by Nikki for I think my birthday last year, which I love you, Nikki. Thank you so much. Um, so this is the bind up because this is actually the first book. It's a novella, but it's also like the first in a bind up of I think two novellas and it makes up this big book. You know what I mean? So it's about the same couple. And as you can see, even on the cover, he's got tattoos all over him. He's tattooed. He's pierced. Okay. This one's about Caden and McKenna. They end up getting stuck in an elevator together, ended up falling for each other without ever seeing what the other person looks like. So this book starts out with our heroine. She's on the elevator, I think at her building where she works. And she's kind of looking down, I think at her phone or rummaging through her purse or something. And someone gets on the elevator, okay? There's one other person with her on the elevator. She doesn't see who it is. And then all of a sudden the elevator stops, the lights go off and she's stuck in the elevator with a man she doesn't know what he looks like and then the hero like vice versa he just got a very small glimpse of her like the, basically the top of her head while she's looking down so he doesn't really even know what she looks like either and so he's this heavily tattooed man with piercings all over his body mm, i love him there's also great anxiety representation in here the hero has anxiety and the heroine helps him through a panic attack while he's in the elevator with her this is just a great great book and it is the next book in the series, um, I have the bind up. So there are two novellas about them. So the first one is basically about them in the elevator and them like getting to know each other in this elevator. And then the second novella, um, the second part of their story is what happens after that. Um, so I love this. This was the 10th anniversary edition, by the way, it's so good. I love this. I need more people to read these books. I first heard about them from my lovely bestie Brie and um, she was like hyping these up and I love stuck in an elevator romances and then give me like a tattooed man who has anxiety. Tick, 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 all those boxes. These did not disappoint. Next I have a series. I'm not going to talk about each book but the whole entire Perfectly Imperfect series by Neva Altaj has tattooed men. You can like see on all of the covers all of their hands are covered in <laughs> tattoos. Like, yes, I love me a good tattooed mafia man. So each book in the series is about a hero and a heroine. The hero is a part of the mafia and it's about them finding the love of their life. Okay, I'll talk about book number one because by the way, these don't all take place in the same like mafia family or anything. You can definitely read these as standalones if you want to. I recommend reading them in order just because like side characters do pop up every now and then, you know what I mean? Um, but I'll talk about book number one. Now a lot of my friends actually start out with book number two, but I have these books up on my shelf. This is the one that I display outward if y'all have seen my shelves before. Anyway, so book number one is Painted Scars. Our hero in here is a mafia boss and he was in a car accident that caused uh, spinal damage and he is a wheelchair user now. He is going to be able to have some functionality in his legs to a point where he can use a cane to walk but he's not there yet. He's trying to get through physical therapy and everything. And some people are like seeing him as weak now um, because he is using a wheelchair, like some of his mafia rivals and are possibly gonna overthrow him. So he's trying to figure out what is a way to make me look strong to my people, marry a woman. And so he blackmails the heroine into marrying him. So it's their romance. So that's book number one. But I know a lot of my friends do actually start with book number two. And I think that's perfectly fine. Honestly, um, this is Broken Whispers. This one's about Mikhail and Bianca and they get put in a marriage alliance between their families. Um, this guy is kind of like the right hand man to this mafia guy from book one. And he's actually been watching the heroine Bianca for quite a few years. She is a very prolific, beautiful ballerina. And um, uh, the boss man basically says like, uh, someone needs to marry this girl so we can get enough alliance with her family because she's from the Italian mafia, I think. 
and uh, Mikhail's like, I'll do it. I will marry her. Bianca is our heroine. She gets in this marriage alliance with Mikhail and um, he is a single father and he um, is missing an eye and she um, cannot speak. It's very painful for her to speak. She was in an accident um, a few months ago, which ended her dancing career. And um, now she's also not able to speak. I love this book so much. It's so good. So this whole series full of tattooed men, as you can see, their hands are all like tattooed. Love them. If you wanted a little novella, I have a Plain Love by Avery Kingston. Our hero and heroine end up meeting on a plane. They're both going to a wedding. They don't know that they're going to the same wedding, but they end up meeting on a plane and the hero got on the plane before the heroine um, and he is a wheelchair user. And she finds him to be a little bit rude because he doesn't stand up to let her to her seat to like make room for her. Um, Cause she's gonna sit in like the middle seat. And I think he's in the aisle seat if I'm not mistaken. And she finds him a little rude, but he's trying to like, he doesn't know how to say like, oh yeah, I can't stand up. I can't walk. Um, he doesn't really know what to say. Anyway, the two of them get to know each other on this plane. And um, they end up actually like forming this very cute connection. And then it turns into something more when they realize like they're going to the same wedding. Like when they show up at the wedding, they're like, oh my gosh, it's you. So it's a really fun, like short read. And yeah, as you can see, we got a tattooed man. Next, I have an Elsie Silver book. This is Powerless, which is the third book in her Chestnut Spring series. This is a friends to lovers romance. This is the romance between Sloane and Jasper. At the beginning of this book, Sloane is about to marry some guy she's not really in love with, but her parents want them to get married. And basically Jasper helps her become a runaway bride and she travels with him around the country while he is playing in hockey games around the country. And this is just like their romance, them falling in love with each other. Um, Jasper is a tattooed hockey player, which love tattoos and I love hockey players mixed together. If you want more of a darker read, I have Scarred by Emily McIntyre. This is the second book in the Never After series. These are tales, kind of like twisted tales where like the good characters fall for the villains. So this is a reimagining of the tale of the Lion King. Like there's not actually lions in here. So don't worry. Okay. Um, so our Scar character in here is our hero and Sarabi or Sarah in this case, in this book is our heroine. And she has been put in this marriage alliance with Scar's brother, who is the king, Mufasa, like the Mufasa character, right? And um, all the hero of the story, Scars, ever wanted is to make his brother pay, take his throne away from him. And then things kind of shift when he meets Sarah and his priorities, his priorities shift. And he's like, I also want this woman to be mine. Like, I'm gonna do everything possible to make this woman mine, to ditch my brother. She's gonna become mine. I'm gonna steal his fiance. So it's so good. Like this hero, he's like one of those villainous characters you like hate, but also can't help but love. Next is everyone's favorite tattooed, small town, animal loving man. Yeah, Beckett. Okay, from In the Weeds by BK Borison. This is his romance with, I think her name's Evie. And yeah, he is one of the co-owners of Love Light Farms, which is a farm that you read about in book one. Evie was a side character in that book. She ends up going to the farm for like a social media contest and um, she ended up going back home afterward, right? But in that book, you get to see how these two bump into each other and have this like, <gasps> like freezing moment because they've actually met before. Um, they had this hookup moment months ago and um, she kind of left in the middle of the night and he was really upset about it. He like kind of saw something there, but they bump into each other again. And Evie is just figuring out that her career isn't really making her happy anymore. And she decides to go back to something that made her happy, which was Love Light Farms. And she bumps into Beckett all over again. And it's their romance. He is this like grumpy tattooed man who loves animals. He has like six cats in his house, like kittens. He has this duck that he's taking care of. Like he loves all these animals, but he's too grumpy and too proud to like admit it <laughs> that he is such an animal lover. Um, but I just love him and all the dedication that he gives towards Evie. Like he is smitten with her. Next is the Dukes and Deeks by Tori Jean. This one looks historical, but it's not. These two are cosplaying, kind of dressing up as Jane Austen characters. So our hero, I can't remember his name for the life of me, Jack. It's Jack and, Jack and Ollie. I'm so sorry, Jack and Ollie. Okay, so they're like best friends, okay? And Ollie, by the way, in this book is going through an endometriosis diagnosis. I love that, okay? She also runs this Jane Austen festival every year in their small town. And um, the characters that are supposed to play Lydia and Wickham, because they have to like perform these scenes as characters, like they're out, 
the festival. Um, the two characters, the two actors who played them have run off together and actually gotten married as like real people. So she's like, oh, what am I gonna do? She ends up just playing Lydia and then the hero ends up figuring out like, oh, she needs help and decides to play Wickham. So them pretending to be these characters kind of force their feelings to come out. You know, like they get to like act like they're in love. And then it shows them like, I want this so bad in real life. So definitely friends to lovers. It's really good. Our hero is another tattooed hockey player. Love it. Next is Torn by Carrie and Cole. So this one is like a taboo, like forbidden romance because this is the romance where our heroine, I think she's 18 and it's her romance with her dad's best friend. So Kenzie is our heroine and her parents actually had her when they were I think like 15, very young. And this is her romance with Torin, who is her dad's best friend. He's like 15 when she was born, was there when she was born. Um, and it's very like taboo, but I honestly was like very skeptical going into this book because of that premise. Like, oh my gosh, he's known her since she was a child. But as you're reading it, you realize they're both growing up together. It's not a thing of like, he's an adult and he sees her being born, like has known her since she was a child because he was an adult at the same time. No, like he was 15 when she was born. Like they both grew up essentially at the same time. They grew up together at different time points. You know what I mean? Um, but I didn't find it like gross at all. They didn't have any romantic feelings for one another. I think until her like 19th birthday. And then all of a sudden like a switch is flipped and they're like, oh my gosh, like I, 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 I think I see you in that way now. But Torn is definitely covered in tattoos. We love him. And the last one that I have to mention, I know it's a holiday read, but you can read this one anytime. This is Mary Inkmas by Talia Hibbert. I love Talia Hibbert. And I think I even read this book like over the summer at one point because <laughs> I just, I wanted to read more of Talia Hibbert and this one is so cute. So the heroine of the story, she works at a coffee shop and she has a little bit of a crush on this guy that comes into the coffee shop every day and basically says like, oh, surprise me, make me whatever you want. Something happens one day and she gets fired from the job when he's there and he kind of feels responsible. He owns a tattoo shop. So the tattoo shop is like a part of the book in here. He owns a tattoo shop down the street and he's like, I will offer you a job like as a receptionist at my tattoo shop, like, come on. Like, I am so sorry. I feel responsible for what happened to you. She ends up working at the tattoo parlor with him and she ends up like learning about some things about him and they get to know each other more. They fall for each other around Christmas time. It is so sweet. She ends up learning that he doesn't even like coffee. Like someone like makes it, like spills the beans of like, he doesn't even like coffee. He just went into the coffee shop to see you every day because he thinks you're so cute. So I love that. That's so cute. Anyways, there you have it. Those are some romances with tattooed heroes that I was obsessed with. Let me know down below if you've read any of these books or if you plan to. And if you don't feel like commenting any of those things, you can leave me a dragon emoji in the comment section down below. But anyways, thank you all so, so much for watching. I will see y'all soon in my next one. Bye y'all.